25 years ago, I sold my soul to the devil to become a corporate executive. I quit it all to play the blues. My name is Tom the Suit Force, and this is Chasing the Blues. Hey everybody, this is Tom the Suit Forced, and welcome to another Chasing the Blues podcast.com session. Today we have a very special guest, Regina Bonelli. Hey Regina, how are you doing? Hey Tom, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Regina has uh, an album that has been a number one pick to click and is still receiving airplay around the globe. I have... Uh, Listen to a bunch of your songs, and I'll tell you, one of my favorite is uh, Love Letter. Oh, okay. Thank um, you. The title track. Yeah, I I really like it. So how is everything going, Regina? Everything is going uh, great, just exceeding expectations. Uh, you know, we knew that the album was, was going to be special I'm, uh, on the label True Groove, and, uh, you know, we... We've been working on it and have been working with amazing producers, Tomas Donker and uh, James Della Tacoma. And I got uh, great, great musicians on the record. I have um, Kevin Jenkins, who plays uh, bass for Shamika Copeland for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, he also wrote two of the songs. I have Nick Rolfe, who is Aretha Franklin's organ player and keyboard player for the last four years. So he's in there. Um, Tony Lewis on drums, Michael Hill from Michael Hill Blues Mob, mm -hmm. um, Gary Schreiner, Mark Henry. I'm trying to a a a name everyone sure, here uh, sure. up at the top here. Um, I have a um, great young player from Finland, uh, Pedal Steel. He plays a gospel pedal steel. His name is Artur Yurinen. Um And, uh, you know, it's just been it, – it's been a uh, uh, – just a great, great run so far, so good. I mean, we've been in heavy rotation on Sirius XM. They've been playing the album for a year. Yeah, I the saw record that. For, yeah, and uh, we just found, we were number one on the Roots Music Report Soul Blues chart. We hit one. Uh, we are now the end of year, the 2018. We're uh, number 13. Um, you know, I just found out um, uh, you know, on a bunch of top, 2018 lists so you know i mean it's awesome the people seem to really like it and uh you know it's of course as the you know the, one of the creators it's a it's a beautiful thing so no I'm that's grateful. That, that's wonderful where where did you actually record the album you must have done it in several places or no no actually we did it all in um orange music studio orange music sound which is um out in Orange, New Jersey, it's Bill Laswell's studio from, you know, uh, Bill Laswell's, uh -huh. been all this stuff. So um, it's his place. It's got a lot of history of, you know, a lot of stuff has been, has happened in there. And it's just very comfortable. It's, it's great working with Tomas and James. You know, it's just super quick and easy and fun, you know, just, just wonderful. Just, just really nice. That's fantastic. You know, I, I listened to some of the songs, and I, I, I got a hint that some of it was analog. Is that right, or or did it just – you did you make it sound analog? No, I, there's, it's, it's mixed. I think there's, you know, both things going on there. I mean, we did live – you know, we did all the basics live. So that's – you know, every one of the songs was just recorded like that, and then okay. we just overdubbed the vocals. Oh, all right. It's uh, it really did sound live, actually. Uh, a couple of couple of tracks that I heard, I really liked them a lot. So, how long have you actually been playing? Oh wow, I've been playing piano since I'm like four. You know, four. I think I started taking little piano lessons there when I was about five or six, and uh, um, then I I played you know to classical lessons, and you know that back then that was really pretty much what you took, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I think when I was around 12, my father played, my father was a musician, not a professional musician, but a, you know, musician also. And so he played guitar and piano. And so there was a lot of music always happening in the house. My sisters played. And then around 12, I think I, you know, I stopped practicing. I guess I, you know, and my parents were like, well, 
you know, if you're not going to practice, we're not going to keep sending you for the lessons. But I picked up the guitar and I started, you know, my father taught me some stuff. And then I started playing the guitar. And once I got into that, I started writing. So I was been writing my own music since I'm about 15, 16 yeah. and playing out, you know, since 17, 18, I was doing gigs. So, Wow. So you you yeah. were you probably were performing during the good times to be a musician, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I've seen like you know, really, it's so hard. You know, now you, you I don't have to tell you. So you know, you just you do it for the love of doing. It. We, we always did it for the love of doing it. I think, especially when you're writing, you know, and you're expressing yourself, or even if you're just you know singing other people's tunes, you know, it's always it's always about. You coming from your heart and soul and, and, and getting it out like that. But at least you could make you know, a living, you know, and, and especially selling records and stuff. So that's been, you know, even my kids, I mean, I have, my kids are 21 and, and 24. And when they, when the album came out, I said, you know, did you download the album? And, you know, cause it's available on iTunes and all the, all the streaming platforms and all that stuff. So uh, Amazon, and I said, did you download the album? They look at me. I, they said, "Ma." I said, "What? Your own mother?" You know. Oh <laughs> you know? man, yeah. that's sad. That's now sad. They, they, then they did it. You know, but they they don't even think like that. Like kids, you know, the it's people, the music is just out there free. I mean, you know, I just got like Spotify stuff. It's point one cent or point oh. It's crazy. Hey, you, know, you did crazy. well. Uh, my <laughs> no, my I, the album before the one that I have. Um, I sold thousands and thousands of songs across the, across the world. I made fifty six dollars. I'm telling you, I know yeah. the deal. I know the deal. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, it, you're right. It's it's definitely for the love of of music. It has changed a great deal, at least since I have started. There was always an audience. They always wanted to hear new music. They always wanted to buy and take part. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will tell the, you, I did mention that uh, when we were off air that uh, I just came back from China. China is like what the U.S. was back in the 70s and 80s. Oh, well, then that's the place to go. Yeah. it's a, You better it, watch out. You're saying that on the air. There'll be a million people out there trying to do that. But hey. no, it's, it's true because, you know, then for, I would say the last five or, you know, maybe even more than that. You you know okay so you couldn't make money that but you could sell your stuff at shows and festivals and those are dwindling places to play live are dwindling so you know you know it's even that I find you know I mean if you played in a at a big festival you're gonna you're gonna sell some some music but it's just you know really like I said it's to get your message out it's it's to it's interesting, you know. It's a, they'll, they'll always listen. There'll always be music, and it's always going to evolve. And uh, you know, so yeah, we, we do what we do, right? Yeah, I what, mean, you know what? And, and and those of you who are not in the music business, we're not complaining as much as we're just stating the facts. We still continue to get out there uh, all the time and do it. So, Regina, what? Why blues? I listen to your voice. You know, you got kind of a uh, a little bit of a gospel sound, I think. Um, and I'm not trying to pigeonhole you here, but uh, no, gospel, no, no. I would say, uh, almost a jazz uh, jazz sound on, on some of the vocals. Um, you know, why do you call yourself a blues? Uh, are, are, is that just the music that you love the most? Well, uh, honestly, I love all music. I mean, I really, really, really do. I, you know, all, I I listen to a huge variety of things. And uh, so it's not that I just, I mean, I do love the blues, but um, I don't know. You know, when I first, I, I've, I've done, I've always written my own music. So to me, that is the common thread, you know, and, and I feel like I'll sing a song and it'll be a Regina song, you know. So whether it sounds a little more, you know, like a, a, the type of song, my voice, however, I, I you know, I don't know. I, I I've always sung, you know, I've sung everything, rock, funk. I had like a funk band for a long time. And um, I always loved the blues. Um, and I had my kids, you know, it was when I had my kids, I sort of took a break from, I, didn't, I was always performing. I kept performing, but I wasn't writing. And then when they got a little bit older and we got into school, 
I, you know, had the the music got it, you know, got me again. So I started. I said, "What am I? You know, what do I want to do? What do I want to do right now? You know." So I think I just was listening to a lot of blues at that point, and I had a friend, uh, rest in peace, this friend that I, I I worked with, and he said, "You know, you should. You sound so blues. People always say you sound bluesy, you know." So. So I started listening to that stuff, and I said, you know, I'm going to write some of that. And then I hooked up with Michael Hill. I met Michael, who who produced and recorded my first album. So that's how I got in the blues world, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. So I I, I would I, I feel like I'm um, you know, I'm I like to think of myself as as a you know unique, like my you know I'm I'm. My my, I do my thing, and then it, you know it goes a little bit here, a little bit there. Did you do you and I saw your live uh cuts uh, and I only saw keyboard do you actually uh use a guitar live I don't not not right now not for this particular I haven't done that in a while I, I I'm going to get do that though I'm a I'm a rhythm player you know I I can't I, I I mean I could play like a mild lead but you know I can't I don't call myself I I find um I never wanted to you know cuz you could capitalize on it I mean I could play the drums you know, a little bit too. So I, I could definitely hold my own on a tune, mm-hmm. but I don't like to, I know people, you know, will get up and they'll pick up this and they'll pick up that and they'll pick up this and they're not really a player, you know? So I never thought that that was sincere. You know, I, I, I thought it was like just kind of sh- giving, giving a little bit of a false thing there. So as far as guitar, I could hang with it. I could hang rhythm wise, you know? So that, that's that's coming in the future. I think we're gonna we're gonna incorporate that. But right now, I have, uh, you know, Tomas Danga plays guitar. Um, I've I've played with Michael Hill, but right now the band is the True Groove All Stars. So that's Tomas and James plays guitar also. And then, like I said, if we have Artur in there with the pedal steel, that's like plenty of stuff going on. You know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You want you want to have some space in blues. That's for sure. Yeah. So open up the door. Uh, when was it actually released? Oh, that was back in I think 2015 or 2014. Yeah. Okay. And the new album is when was that released? Love Letter was just released October 26th, my birthday. So it's only been you know it's charting on all these things and getting these top you know airplay stuff, and it's only been out for two months. And the, the single came out in in January, mm-hmm. and and uh, Sirius has been playing uh, Don't You Put Your Hands on Me for. Ever. That's fantastic. You know? That's a that's thank a great yeah. that's a great one. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. No, I, I saw that and I was um, I thought that was really exciting. Well, that you know that's really uh, I like to write. You know, as I said, coming from uh, my heart and coming from a place of you know certain experiences and and uh, and that's about domestic violence. And so whenever I play that song. Uh, I get a lot of, you know, people come up to me afterwards and they, mostly women, you know, cause that's mostly who, you know, but it's good. It goes both ways. And, but it's very, it's, it's very, um, a powerful, I think, uh, message. So that yeah. means a lot to me. That's yeah. a, I think that's wonderful. You know what? If I have any negativity toward blues and I probably shouldn't say this out loud, um, <laughs> I, I do get a little tired of, and I've mentioned this in, even in blues forums, that I do get a t- little tired of, hey, I left I left my baby, and then you repeat, hey, I left my baby, you know. Um, right. It's nice to have some lyrics that are uh, content-based, have some sort of meaning or, or really story you can grab onto. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I that's agree. great. I, I, I think that's fantastic. Um. Let me ask you this: You're you've been playing since you were four or five years old. Uh, started, uh, you know, re- playing very young uh, in your you know fifteen early teens. Who who do you think you know? I know you said Michael Hill was definitely somebody that you uh, you know started out with. But when you look back at blues people that are the pretty much the mainstays. Do you have somebody or anybody or a group that you say, wow, man, the, the, these people or this person are really my influence? Well, I mean, there's so many great, you know, musicians, blues and, and other genres that I'm, I feel like I'm influenced by, you know, all the, all the old, the soul singers, you know, obviously 
Uh, but I, I think as far as in the blues genre uh, specifically, I always related to Big Mama Thornton. Uh, and I had the, I was snuck into the, she was playing around, you know, in uh, the village. And um, friends of mine used, used to tell me about her and about, um, oh my God, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. You know, they used to come through. And um, I had the pleasure of seeing them too. So, and, and and I feel like she, you know, there's, well, I mean, the blues started right with the tw- in the twenties. It was all females, but then it, it's you know it's a, it's a it's a man's club, you know. So when when females come in, and I think especially back way back, you know, when she she started what in the fifties or something like that, in sixties, and so, um, also wrote the music, so I could relate to her there, you know, wrote, you know. Ball and Chain, I mean, made famous by Janis Joplin, but Big Mama thought and wrote it. Right, so, right. You know, and uh, and and she, I think, also recorded um, the Elvis, uh, you know, Hound Dog, Hound Dog right? yeah. before he recorded it. That's so, right. Yeah, so that, that always appealed to me. I mean, she, you know, her, her voice is fantastic, you know, and, and uh, I just always... So the fact that you know there she was in there hanging with with the guys because that's what you do as a, as a as a as a I, I hate female musician you know like I, I I you know I belong to the women in blues on Facebook I love I love them all dearly but I always feel like I don't like to be called like a fe- you know people don't say oh hey you know it's 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 that male guitar player BB King you know but they'll say oh yeah it's that female guitar player. Uh, you know, Joanna Connor or something like that. So, I I hate that. You know, like I just, I, I dislike when the, when when the, we have to gender the females. But that being said, you know, it's it's cool that she's you know she's in there, and that's what you do when when you're playing because it is mostly a mostly a male dominated field. So. You know, you become you're one of the boys. Yeah, maintain your own. (laughs) Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree, and they're definitely standouts. Um, I'm, I'm starting to see, and I've actually interviewed several uh, more um, instrumentalists that are females. That which you know, obviously, females started off with just you know singing, and then then accompanying, and now I'm starting to see. Like I, I listen to your keyboard playing. You're piano playing, and you're you're the real deal. It wasn't like you were just playing uh, accompaniment. You were you were you were ripping up some uh, pretty good uh, pretty good licks here. That from what I well, had thank heard. you, thank yeah. you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. And you're right. It, it it is kind of a boys' club, and the blues is interesting because. And I always get off on my soapbox, by the way. So here it goes. Um, the blues is interesting because they are so traditional. And you get a lot of people in the blues who don't want to change what happened in 1926. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't want to. Right. They don't want to move from that. And I, I'm I'm a blues rocker, so I'll okay. get somebody to say, "Man, that was really great," but I'm not sure that was blues. Right. Well, right. I, well I, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you know, and I'm I'm sitting here going, "Really? It's so hard. Aren't you a little hard pressed?" to say anything from the United States is not blues? I mean... <laughs> yeah. Know. Well, hey, look, I mean, you know, blues is is African-American music coming out of, you know, that experience, right? right. So that's really, if, you know, that's where it, it started. And then if you want to go, really, I mean, all, you know, Mother Africa, you know, so, but... I think that to me, because my my music is obviously not straight blues. You know, it's 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 blues influenced, but it's it's R and B. It's it's you know, like you said, a little gospel, a little this and that, a little rock, whatever. But I think that you know, everybody's entitled to the. To, you know, that's the thing about music. It's it's an an art. It's 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 subjective, and it's 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 in 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 good ways. So if people like music from the twenties, blues from the twenties, or they like blues from the sixties and the fifties, you know, you could either go listen to those original recordings or, you know, there are people, I guess that feel, you know, that they want to preserve that, which is awesome. Or they, they want to, you know, in, the one thing I don't really care for is when people take, you know, modern day uh, artists take, a, st- a song, 
like a classic. And then they just change the lyrics a little bit. And it's really not, it's nothing creative going on there. I mean, it's just, you might as well listen to The Thrill is Gone rather than listen to some new person, you know, change some lyrics up and the, the song sounds like The Thrill is Gone. I, I You yeah. know, so that to me, I don't I don't care for. But if you want to, people that want to preserve the original music and, and that's cool. But I, at the same time, I feel like everything grows, you know, everything grows. Oh, and, I, and, I'm, I'm with you and I, I have the same problem whenever I hear the same song done. I mean, if you're in a cover band, I get it, but right, right, you know, right. I get that. But or if, you're, if you want to play, right, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, ahead. no. I, I, I was just saying, we agree that it's really about the creativity. Even if you're doing someone's song, bring your own heart and soul to it. Right. Why copy right. it? You might as well hear the real thing, you know? Right. Yeah. Or you know, I, I was thinking, different, you know, what's that? I said, do something different. You know, things we don't listen to. Listen, when you put on the radio, you don't hear b- big bands now. I mean, if you want to find a, an, uh, an odd station that plays it, you'll see it. But music evolves. Art evolves. So the blues has, has to evolve, too. I mean, you know, that's that's what I, I that's what I think. But but I think there's room for, like I said, people like different things. Everybody likes different things. That's the beauty of of art. So as long as we, you know, I just do what I do. I'm not trying to do, I don't know about you as a, you know, as, but me as a, a, a writer, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything specifically. I'm not saying, Oh, I'm going to go make a, you know, I'm going to write a song that's good. I, most of the time it's just really flowing. Yeah. And, you know, I, I get it's, that. It's, I, it's frustrating though. Sometimes don't you find it? Like I'll go to write a blue song and when I'm done, I'm saying, now, how did that happen? Uh, that is not a blues song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you we know, could do it if we wanted to, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just, you're, it's a stream of consciousness. And, and I've mentioned this to several people, even in um, like master classes. I've said, you know, where does it all come from? I'm not sure, but sometimes I get a distinct feeling it's not coming from me. It's just, mm-hmm. sometimes I'm sitting there and, a song prints out in my head before I even start. And other times, you know, it's three years. <laughs> right. You know? Or sometimes people ask you, how do you, and it's often people that don't, you know, do it. So it's like, it's no, for me anyway, it's not a, a set thing. Like sometimes it's a lyric that I think of and I'm like, Oh, that would be cool. Or sometimes it's some court changes or sometimes it's something that happened in the world or in life. And I'm like, Oh, you know, that would be a good song. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. you know, now. So I, I agree with that boy. So Regina, yeah. um, you have a brand new album out. Are you uh, backing that up? Are you heading uh, out on tour? Are you playing locally? What's uh, what's happening? with your uh, schedule? Well, we are, we just got back from Maine. We played up in uh, um, the Time Out Pub up in Maine for their final uh, end of year big bash up there. Mm-hmm. And we did the Gloucester Blues Festival uh, a couple of months before that. Uh-huh. So uh, we're, you know, like I said, the album's doing great on the charts and, and radio. And uh, we just played a, a True Groove had a big um global soul throwdown they call it a yearly thing at the bitter end in brook in uh, manhattan which is sure. becoming uh it's you know i've played there all my life but it's definitely becoming uh, a place to play again you know yeah. so yeah. yeah so we have you know we just uh like hit it up there in maine and we're looking to book gigs so That's hey great. you know yeah, yeah, we're well, going to take great. it out on the road. So mm-hmm. it's uh, New Year. Everyone is going to, you know, ask everybody, you know, what's your plan for the New Year? Any uh, any major goal out there? Um, major goal is 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 getting. Um, we're, we're looking at getting over to Europe to do some gigs. Um, obviously, uh, some festival things are in the works, and and uh, some touring around here. Great, uh, great. You know, all over the place. I'm trying to. I got talking to somebody out and. Uh, California, maybe head out there and down to Austin. Um, and also, you know, just writing some more, you know, starting, starting to look at the next one. Yeah. So, that's uh that's the way to do it. That is the way yeah. to do it. So how do people 
who are interested, and they should be, by the way, because it's really good music, how Thank do you. they reach you, uh, listen to your music, get on your website, etc.? Okay, well, I have uh, my website is reginabonelli.com, R E G I N A B O N E L L I. And um, my Facebook, you could go on my Facebook page. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. It's Regina Blues Soul, B L U E S S O U L. You can follow me on there. Um, the music is available, it's out on True Groove Records, and it's uh, available on all digital platforms. Um, you know, iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, uh, whatever else is out there. You know, sure. all of that stuff. Um, I have physical copies, CD copies. Great. If anybody wants to purchase that from me, um, they can email me or send me a message on uh, Facebook or from my uh, my uh, website. And I'll, I've already sent out a bunch of uh, things to people, so we can work that out also. It's a nice... Uh, album. It's got uh, Derek Bishop did some really nice photo and artwork on it. And, um, you know, so they can get a CD if people still, you know, there are people that still like to have those CDs. Oh, yeah. So they're they're okay. available, you know, and uh, just look, you know, look on my sites and you'll see, you know, when we'll be around and, and uh, you could come out and support live music. That's a beautiful thing. Well, since we're in the same time zone, one of these days we'll have to uh, sit down and play together. Yes, for sure. For, yeah, I've gone up. I've played up in Black Eyed Sally's a couple oh, of times. I haven't my, been up there for a while, but that's my favorite. You know, I'm I'm a I'm 40 minutes from there. Uh, uh, I play there so often. It's just, it's oh, just, do you? Just a fun spot. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, maybe we'll get up there soon and uh, Great. and uh, we, we, we can jam. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Regina. Uh, this is Tom the Suit Forest, and you're listening to Chasing the Blues Podcast dot com. And I hope everybody has a great day. Com. And connect with me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tom the Suit Forced. You can find my music, tour dates, merch, and more on TomTheSuitForce.com. Thank you for listening. I've seen some guitar players down in Bourbon Street. They have
the king, stroke the guitar neck. That 